Okay, here we go. I'm here with Jason Dinicky and Dave Davis, who played Brian Dinicky. Yo, and yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say thanks, uh, Dave Davis, uh, for taking the time out of your day for this interview. Uh, my pleasure. You know, it's, 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 it's great to hear that you love the movie, and uh, it's always, always nice to talk to Jason, so happy to be here. Thank you. Um, what first off, what was it like playing in our hometown, Bomb City? I loved it. I loved Amarillo. I, I think I ate a massive steak. Um, I, I had a lot of a lot of fun in Amarillo. There's some great people around there. Um, you know, we ate some good food. We saw some cool stuff. We skateboarded around the town. Um, and I really, really enjoy Texas, so Amarillo is a great place to be. Thanks, yeah. Um, what did you think about the Dynamite Museum? Uh... Man, the Dynamite Museum was so cool. I wish I could have seen it in its heyday. You know, when there was, what was it, Jason? Was there a tiger? Oh, uh, yeah, there's white tigers and, and all kinds of different different stuff. Yeah, and you know, I used to play... Uh, Billiards with the giant pool giant, balls in giant the field, right? Giant table in the field. And... I mean, Dynamite Museum was super cool. Uh, and the signs, that collection is incredible. Yeah. Um, I have some a lot, like, over there where, where, I'm, where I live. I'm actually, I actually live across the street from Jason, too. Oh, nice. I love that street. Yeah, uh... My other question was, uh, what did you think about if if you ever heard uh, this guy, this other artist named Jacob Morin covering up the Stanley Marsh's signs? What do What do you think about I, that? I didn't hear about that, um, but as long as I mean, I think as long as he's not ruining them or defacing them, I think it's probably in the spirit of that sort of anarchist, artistic, you know free expression. Is, is he destroying them or is he messing them up? Uh, oh, he's, he's completely covering them with his own own thing. Oh, well, that's horrible. I mean, that's, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought too. Um, I was posting some up on Instagram and uh, I didn't want to, I didn't post any of those that he covered up because it, it wouldn't really mean anything. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think that's like really messed up for him to take something that means so much to so many people. And uh, try to make it about him. Yeah, that's true. You know, he could he could learn learn from from Jason's example and make his own signs. You know, learn from the example of the artists that came before him and repeat that and do it the way he wants to do it instead of trying to mess up the art that other people have already created. Yeah, that's true. Now this was like seven years ago, uh, so I don't know if he's doing it anymore, but he's just. You know, the way he's doing it, he's just going around asking them if they want him covering up. But people say they do just because of who Stanley Marsh was, but they don't know. Like, uh, I guess they haven't seen uh, the Bomb City or know Jason Dennehy or know, you know, the back background story to to, the, to all of this. And, um, you know, the work that they put into it and, and yeah. the mark, the mark that it originally left on... Um, Amarillo, Texas. Yeah, it sounds like it's just a lot of ignorance. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it, it's it's unfortunate that, you know, Stanley Marsh, you know, obviously he's, a lot of people have different opinions about him, and if he was an abusive guy, like, I, I don't know anything about that, really. Um, and that's terrible, but the art that was created, and, and that wasn't just about him, that was about the people who created it as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, did you did you have a sign that stood out to you the most? Good question. Um, I have to think about that for a second. I mean, you know, there's a few classic ones in the movie that are featured. Those are probably the ones that are popping into my head. Okay. I I, I don't know I don't know if I could quote it exactly, but I mean. I had seen several in preparation for the movie, and then when I actually got down to Amarillo, and just 
just the thrill of seeing them around town. Like, it was like a scavenger hunt. You know, you'd be like, oh, there's another one. And just like, the, just the way that they would just pop out of nowhere. And, you know, you're, you're on just like a little basic street or whatever. And then here's this incredible, timeless work of art that, you know, it's, it's so filled with meaning. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't know if one particular really pops out in my mind. I mean, just, I, have, I love them all, you know. And they work together to just like build this, it's, it's a massive installation, you know, it's, it's the whole thing works as one piece. It's like, um, you know, they do these incredible art festivals around the world and it's all location based sculptures and people use the area around them to, uh, to create these installations. And, and Amarillo has one of the biggest, most incredible, beautiful art installations in the world as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, that's true. Somewhere, somewhat about like um, 3,000 and up uh, signs overall, all over Amarillo. And I still haven't found all of them, but, you know, that, that'll take a lifetime to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, that's good. If you're trying to get out there and document them, I think that's something the world really needs. Hex, yeah. Um, what, uh, did you meet uh, Brian and Jason's family. Yeah, I love them. Thanks, yeah. Um, and what was it like playing as Brian Janicki? It was, you know, it was one of the greatest privileges of my life. And, and I, I, you know, I can't say thank you enough to all the Dennekees for, for opening their, their home and their hearts and, and their lives to me and, and to let me in in that way. And, you know, playing Brian, it really changed the way that I look at myself. It made me feel like a different person. It made me, it, it freed up parts of my heart that I thought were open and that weren't really open until I tried to tried to step into his shoes and, and, and do, do justice to who he was as a man and, you know, the, the character that he embodied and the spirit that he brought to the world. Thanks, yeah. Um... So how how did the how did the story affect you as an actor? Hmm. Another really good question. Um, you know, in the same way that it affected me as a person, to be honest, because Brian taught me to be fearless. You know, he taught me to live in the moment, and as an actor, that's the most important thing you can do. So I've tried to take that courage and that uh, that desire to you know really let loose and, and, and be free and be open hearted to other projects and other roles and you know fear is the art killer so to live in with joy and and passion the way that Brian did that's you know the best thing an artist can hope for and, and as an actor. Thanks. Yeah. Um. What was your favorite part about playing in the movie Bomb City? Um, exactly what you just said, playing. Yeah, we were listening to music all the time, we were jumping around, moshing. We were just constantly partying. Great people, uh, great food. You know, we were we just had so much fun. So so that that was that was the best part, just loving every minute with all the people that were around and, and having fun. Oh yeah. Um, did you did you get a chance to see Brian Dennehy's jacket in person? Yeah, at, uh, at Jason's house. Okay, that's cool. Uh, wh what did you What did you think about the jacket? It was a really emotional moment. Uh, you know, it just made me feel very close to Brian, and it made me feel very close to his his you know. It, 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 he made it, you know, it was like, I felt like I was in his hands and in his artistic discretion. And I had spent all this time trying to understand who Brian was and try to, you know, be him. And then here I was sort of like, you know, getting to give him a hug in a way. Yeah, that's cool. Um, uh, another question is, would you ever come back to our hometown Bomb City in the future? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! You better. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, lastly, do you have any other or any punk bands that you like yourself? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I gotta be honest, I throw on the shit split all the time now. Um, when I need to get wrapped up, I throw on tonight, we're gonna fuck shit up, and I'll, and I'll get going. Yeah. <laughs> I got a I got a little uh, record collection myself. Yeah, what's your favorite? Uh, I really like uh, Under the Influence and uh, Upsetting that came into Amarillo, uh, Texas at the 806 Coffee Shop. Did you ever get a chance to go there? I think I did actually. Yeah, they were pretty cool. I really like yeah, them. Really good coffee. Yeah. <laughs> um, um. Oh, really? I love The Clash. To me, that's just like classic rock and roll. And uh, I put them sort of in the same category as like the Beatles, even almost. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, love, I love playing a lot of different Clash songs on like piano and guitar. So I listen to The Clash a lot. Yeah, that's cool. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for joining our interview. Uh, it means a lot. And to Dang, our... This was great, man. Thank you for the really insightful questions. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, this Everybody, this was Dave Davis uh, doing the interview, and we, we were here with Jason Denneke. And uh, just want to say thank, thank you again, Dave Davis. My pleasure, and, and thank you. And Jason, uh, let's catch up soon, man. All right, for sure. All right. All right, love you, brother. All right, love you, bro. Punk's not dead. Punk is not dead. Love and well. Uh, yeah.